Hello that right? Be very welcome or welcome to this video. Today, I will provide you with all the information you need to know about the lost superfoods before purchasing it. Additionally, I have important alerts for you, so please pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you and watch this video until the end. Your life during the next crisis will likely depend on the food you have available. The most nutritious food on earth that requires absolutely no refrigeration was invented during the Cold War to survive a possible nuclear attack. America needed a new kind of bunker food that was extremely nutritious, incredibly cheap, easily reproducible on a massive scale, and long-lasting without refrigeration. After five and a half years and hundreds of failed experiments, one military scientist finally cracked the food code. It was called the Doomsday Ration, and its recipe was kept secret for decades. With it, you could keep an adult well-fed for just 37 cents a day. Our government ended up stockpiling huge amounts of doomsday rations and shelters all across the country for a war that never came. However, this food didn't spoil, and it was eventually put to good use. Over 150,000 tons of doomsday rations were unearthed and sent for emergency relief all over the world. Even today, more than 60 years later, full boxes are being discovered from time to time. They're still completely edible and taste like matzos. But this is just one of the 126 survival foods you can find in the Lost Superfoods book. You will discover not just the recipes of this long-lasting food, but full instructions with pictures as well as long-term storage and nutritional values. Today, I would like to share with you the one ingredient you need to make your own doomsday rations, but also some other powerful lost foods that you will find in this book. But first, let me tell you why you should even listen to me in the first place. One of the things I realized is how vulnerable we've all become compared to our grandparents' generation. Let me explain. The most important and valuable thing in life is our time. It's our only real currency. We spend time at work and get paid for it. When you go buy a new car or sofa, you pay with the number of hours you work to get the money you need for any of the goods we possess right now. We paid with tiny bits of our lives. The shirt on your back, your TV, the device that you're watching the short video on. Money is nothing but valuable pieces of your time that you pay for the final goods you really need, like food, for example. During the time when our grandparents lived, people used their time in a very different way. They didn't keep most of it as paper money in the bank or plastic in their wallets. Instead, they kept it as long-lasting foods and other vital items inside their root cellars and pantries. Many of them had enough put away to feed their family for a whole year, sometimes more. That's what made them so resilient to any crisis and why even at the height of the Great Depression, you would struggle to find a single American household that starved. But how many of us today have that kind of stockpile to fall back on? All we have is money in supermarkets, where we exchange that money for food and other essentials, which is okay as long as money keeps its value. And if a disaster disrupts our increasingly fragile supply chain, otherwise most supermarkets have only three days' worth of food, which will disappear even faster when people begin to panic. But money is only good as long as people agree it is. It has no value of its own and in a crisis, it quickly becomes worthless. You can't eat paper, but good, nutritious food that doesn't spoil will always keep its value no matter what happens to the world around us. The bottom line is this. As long as you keep all your time stockpiled as paper, stocks, bonds, gold, or anything that doesn't have a basic survival value, you are vulnerable and may find yourself at the mercy of others. Most of us today rely only on what we've got left in the fridge, thinking we can always go buy some more. But that's a big mistake, as recent history has proven time and again. During the 1941 siege of Leningrad, over two million people were trapped inside the city. Boris Novakovis was one of them. As rations quickly plummeted for everyone, but especially for the old and weak, his fate looked sealed. But Boris was no ordinary old man. Like many of us today in the US, he didn't expect something bad would happen. That's what I wanted to tell you. I hope it helps you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you find the video useful. Thank you for watching the video.